everybody! Welcome to part two of how I made my Witcher 3 Ursine concept armor. In part one, we went over why I chose this as my first cosplay, as well as how I made the top half of the costume. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out! In this video, we'll be going over the lower half of the costume, as well as all of the accessories, special effects makeup, and swords. I will be releasing a separate special effects makeup tutorial later on as well. I can't wait to show you guys, so let's get right into the video. When considering making the Ursine pants, we played dress up with Geralt in the game. We noticed that because the boots come up so high and the gambeson is so long, you don't really see much of the pants. Since it was too much effort to make the Ursine style pants, I decided to go with a much simpler option, the Calvary trousers. I originally bought cheap linen pants from eBay and glued on some faux leather fabric strips to make it look like the Calvary trousers in the game. The fabric of the pants was really thin, and I didn't have high hopes on them lasting. Throughout the year of wearing them, I ripped the pants not once, but twice. The first time I was able to fix them with glue. The second time, the fabric was just too worn thin to be fixed. To replace them, I decided to make the same type of pants, but with a much thicker fabric. I used some beautiful sturdy gray upholstery linen from Joanne's Fabrics. Since linen has basically zero stretch, I needed a straight leg style to be able to kneel down and get into lower positions. The waist is elastic and surprisingly difficult for me to sew. I cut some more faux leather straps and glued them on to keep them in place. Then I went through and weathered them using acrylic paints. Overall, the pattern was pretty easy to follow and I love how they turned out. The only thing I would add are pockets. In the game, there's a tier of master crafted ursine armor that has fur on the pauldrons. I decided to make a version of this look with a faux fur scarf from eBay. I used some hairspray and gave it a quick blow dry to give the fur some body. It secures closed with a bobby pin. As an alternative look, I also made the scarf that Geralt wears in the game from some scrap suede that I also used on the gambeson. I like having a variety, depending on the location of the shoe. The scarf is nice and light in summer, and the fur keeps me warm in the snow. I originally hadn't put much thought into the school that I wanted my character to be from. I just got a wolf medallion from eBay since it was the most recognizable. Unfortunately, the medallion I bought came to me looking nothing like their photo. It was almost a black color and didn't have red eyes like they advertised. So I spray painted it silver and added some red Swarovski crystals from Joann's to make it look a little better. Because it was pretty lightweight, I glued on a high strength magnet and secured it to the scarf. This keeps it from flipping over during filming and photo shoots. Eventually, I saved up for a custom bear school medallion from Etsy. I am beyond thrilled with the quality. It's a nice weight, high quality metal, and has amazing details in the crystal eyes. I absolutely love it. The swords are official game replicas from Replica Dungeon. This was my splurge purchase because I knew from the beginning that I was not interested in crafting foam or metal swords. While I can't take them to conventions, I don't really mind since I don't plan on attending many anyway. Hashtag 2020, am I right? The swords are pretty heavy, but great quality and look amazing. While I wouldn't use them for battle, I did test them out on a pretty ferocious enemy. I had originally decided to make the same ursine boots as in the game. I started with a pair of tan leather booties. I began making faux leather boot covers, but it wasn't turning out right. After many tries and wasting a bunch of material, I gave up. It's okay to take a loss on crafting something that's just not working out. Instead, I found a beautiful pair of sturdy riding boots at a thrift store. They were already worn in and have been through snow, mud, swamps, and forest with me. I got really lucky with this purchase, and I love how they look. The only downside is they're not insulated, so my toes get pretty cold when shooting in the snow and ice. I get a lot of question about my cat eye contacts. Well, I actually never bought contacts for the cosplay because I'm scared of shoving plastic in my eye. The cat eyes you see in our photos are good old Photoshop. 
when researching contacts, I found that most cat eye contacts turn sideways after wearing them, even for a few minutes, making you look like a goat. Besides, in our short film The Cursed Maiden, you can't really tell since the makeup and lighting is pretty dark in a majority of the film. I love doing the makeup for this costume, but for the sake of time, I'll just be doing a quick overview in this video. I will be releasing a full makeup tutorial later on. The characters in Witcher tend to have a pretty natural look besides heavy black eyeshadow for the most part. So the base of my look is a dewy full face foundation to cover up any blemishes. No matter what your gender is, I highly recommend using a base foundation to even out your skin tone and highlight your features when cosplaying. I use skin tone eyeliner to map out the scarring. To make the wound indentation, I use Krylon scarring liquid. This makes the scar look like it's actually cut into my skin rather than sitting on top, which I prefer. Don't put this stuff too close to your sensitive eye area. It can really hurt to peel it off. To complete the wounds, I use some cheap lipsticks and glosses to fill them in. I like making them look like fresher wounds rather than old healed scars because it shows up better on camera. I also add some charcoal and brown powders to make the look more intense. I base my character's hair off of a Viking hairstyle. I thought this would go well with the Ursine armor since it's from Skellige, and Skellige is based off of Norse culture. Norse hair is characteristic of having shaved sides and a longer brushed back hair on top. The end result is super intense. After completing the costume, I went through and weathered the whole thing. I used charcoal powders, dark foundation powders, markers, and acrylic paints. I used brushes and sponges to vary up the texture. A lot of the areas were pretty subtle and wore off in the beginning. I revisited the weathering recently and went even darker than I thought I needed to, especially on the gambeson. It shows up much better on camera. It might feel a little bit scary to weather your outfit at first, but this makes the costume a whole lot more believable and interesting. Don't worry about brands and types of weathering materials. You can even use paper towels and coffee to weather your costume. And finally, we have a custom set of Witcher armor. Overall, this was a huge commitment and there were many times when I thought my skills weren't good enough to continue. I just had to be patient and take breaks when I needed them. While it does help to have a support network to cheer you on, the most important thing is to have fun. I made this costume for myself to make me happy. Never let anyone say that you can't achieve something that you're passionate about. I will be making one more video in this Witcher series focusing on the special effects makeup, so keep an eye out for that. If you want to purchase any of the materials, support our work, or follow us on social media, check out the links below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, thanks for watching. And go.